Oh my god. Yeah, I know. Speaking of, like, difficult outcomes, um, as Adam was talking about just a minute ago, um, my friend was talking to me about fracking the other day. And um, if you don't know what it is, do the research. Um, I don't have time in my seven minutes to tell you, but... Um, <laughs> Anyway, it's just, it's, it's, it left me just unable to deal, and I just felt like so much rage, and then some, for some reason I was able to, like, find the hope, I don't know where it came from, grace, um, and so that's what this song is about. It's called New Way.
I loop shit though. <laughs> wow. Oh, I got to hear that song before many people because I subscribed to Meg on this new website called Patron21.com. So I'm going to take this opportunity to plug that. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome new website. It was started actually by a member of our community, a dude, Jeremy Cox, a good friend who lives like right over there, um, like literally like two blocks away. And um, it's, it's really exciting. It's like a new model for crowdfunding that's not based on a single project like Kickstarter or Indiegogo, but is based on subscribing to an artist's ongoing body of work. So it's very simple. You donate any amount you want to an artist on a monthly basis, and in exchange, they give you something. So Meg sends me a track every week, every month, and they're always off the hook. They are unbelievable. So not like one of my favorite artists and dear friends. And yeah, so that's my plug for her, for Patient 21. For myself, I'm also on Patient 21. <laughs> Check me out. <laughs> and um, my band, The Idealist, also on Patient 21, and a bunch of other bad artists. So check that shit out. And now, moving right along on the open mic. Um, I'm so excited. There are so many new people here today. It's always really, really exciting when we see new faces. It means we're doing something right. So. Um, this is one of our, our first timers, so give him a huge, extra warm round of applause. Give it up for Danny! Woo! Woo! Yeah. Alright, awesome. Okay. Hey guys. Right. Hey. Yo. Hi. Hey, it's me. <laughs> Oh, you want to use my mic? Oh, I can share. Sure. Yeah, this yeah. is really Yeah, no, this is good. All right, thanks. Hey, all right, so my name is Danny. This is Alex. Alex. Um, Woo-hoo! That's Feedback. Yes. Um, <laughs> True. We're, um, our band name is called The Small Crowd. Nice. And uh, it's because we're really tiny. There's two of us. <laughs> nice. So we've got a couple songs um, that we've written over the past little while. Past month or so? Yes, and um, the first one's called Somewhere in Time.
definitely should check out Patron 21. Get yourselves on there. Get yourselves out there. That is like, you got something special, for sure. And come back, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, word. Um, next up, to the mic. He brought Meg Anderson into this world, and for that, we are eternally grateful. He's also a beautiful, dear soul, royal soul. Give it up for Mike Anderson! somewhat successful at it. I don't take credit for that. It's not something I'm particularly proud of, but hey, George Ryan knows who I am. Lee Daniels knows who I am. Jim Ryan and so forth. But a lot of people will say, if Jack Sandro, if he has all these contacts, see, and not just in politics, but in the church too, you knew, didn't you, that I've been recently made a third order Franciscan? It's not like I'm ordained or anything, but it does take some doing. And I could start listing now all these contacts and all these accomplishments but do I have to go around and paste these things to people's eyeballs? Do I have to take my marine commission and paste it to people's eyeballs? Do I have to take some of the women I've been seeing lately and paste it? The one I'm seeing now is, get this, the divorced former wife of a county official, who shall remain nameless, but she is a babe. She's 57, I'm 48. The other woman I'm seeing is, she's like seven years older than me, and you know, it's not like I'm looking for a particular age woman or something, but you know, to get back to my point, People will say, if Jack Sandro, if he has all these wonderful accomplishments, why does he have to keep squawking about them all the time? Well, I have the answer to that, because people can't hear me. Why? If I knew why. But you try to say things and people don't hear you. You hear me. I call you. I talk to you. And see, people, when they see my parade saber, they'll say things like, oh, well, you must have done this, and you must have done that, da 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 Well, hell, where do you think you get a thing like that? In the pawn shop? I was a lieutenant in the United States fucking Marines, for Christ's sake. Pardon my friends. Hey, my saber, you still have it, don't you? I haven't moved it. It's hanging right where you left it, down in the basement wall. Come by and get it any time. Okay, that's it. Got him on. Bye. St. Louis on I-270, but if you if you have, you, you may have seen the sign for Old Hall's Ferry Road. And uh, uh, so this is a real road, a real poem about a real road. You're driving through St. Louis on I-270, you see the sign, and though you keep driving, you keep thinking about Old Hall's Ferry Road, about the road the road must be, one rutted, one lane trail making a lazy S-curve around a ledge of stone that overlooks a bungalow, where on the porch Paul sits and nods, Paul's ferry rocking softly in the bay. 
and though you seem this only in reverie, yet you were taken by a very real distress as you assumed somewhere some new Hall's Ferry Road, some eight-lane controlled access, halogen blighted thoroughfare. Later that night, you take your discontent and make of its lines of verse about the death of tradition, about the curse of progress. And this poetry, it just flows. Yes, there is the one given line, the one line of Valerie, but then another and another and on and on until you come to what you know to be the end. Before you go up to bed, you put a title to it. What else can you call it but about Old Hall's Ferry Road? Next morning as you come down, there it is on the desk. You pick it up, you give it a read, and you're thinking, I like this, this is good. It is good. The tone is right, with just the right mix of grief and indignation, with just the right mix of Jeremiah and lament. So, you start trying it out at open mics. And people are polite. You send it off to some small presses, but nothing. And then it catches on. And you are able to say, if of only of your small region, it's well received. There's even that season, and now you can't recall, was it two or three Christmases ago? You stuffed your greeting cards. And then one night, you're out of town, you're far from home, you're at a crowded bookstall, leaning against a case of new poetry, and though the place is jammed, you're in a zone, searching each volume through a prospector, sifting gravel in a mountain brook, when this title, the latest from the laureate, it just appears, it just materializes there on the page. And now you stand up straight and read it out, out loud as though alone. The laureate's homage, an ode she calls, about, about, old Paul's fairy <laughs> I was like, wait, he's talking about the poem, what is happening right now? Like, yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Very meta. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, because you read a poem for a dude named Jack, give it up for Jack!
so I guess, yeah. Well, try to keep it, I guess, well, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Showing up to almost every open mic every Monday. He's a beautiful brother. Um, plays the sitar, which is unlike anything I've ever seen at any other open mic. So he put, makes this really special with what he brings. And he plays the 12 string guitar and makes it sound like a sitar. He's about to blow your mind. Give it up one more time for Jack. Check, check. 